Art Blakey once said, Jazz is the art of telling a story through sound. A jazz musician weaves a tale with every note, conveying emotions, experiences, and ideas through their instrument. The improvisational nature of jazz allows each performance to be a unique narrative. Just like humanity itself, jazz is a beautiful tapestry woven with fragments of sadness, happiness, love, and struggle, creating an emotional journey that resonates with each listener. It's music, he said, that comes direct from the creator to the artist to the audience in a split second. The idea of playing jazz is to be professional enough to make a mistake, make the same mistake again, and then make something out of that, Blakey said. That's jazz, and if you ain't professional enough to do that, then you ain't a professional jazz musician. I'm not saying you're not a good musician, but if you don't know your instrument enough to go back and make that mistake twice, and do something creative with it, forget it. Because that's how jazz was born. Somebody goofed. Arthur William Blakey was born on October 11, 1919, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but never knew his parents. According to the drummer who grew up in the Hill District of the city, as a child he was raised by a series of stepmothers, including his maternal grandmother, following the death of his own mother when he was 21 months old. By the time his mother died, his father had already left the scene. Life was tough for young Art Blakey. As a teenager, he was expelled from school and began working in a steel mill, but aspired to become a piano player. Self-taught, Blakey wasn't by all accounts a very good pianist. By the time he was in seventh grade, he was working professionally. He landed a steady job at a club owned by a gangster. Legend has it that he was forced to switch from piano to drums after the gangster threatened to shoot him if he didn't get behind a drum kit. From that point onwards, Art Blakey devoted himself to being a drummer. Blakey learned to play drums on the job. I used to play every night, he said. It didn't matter how much money I was making. I just had to play every night. When we'd get through playing at night, it was daybreak. Then we'd play the breakfast show. After that, we'd have a jam session, which would go on until two in the afternoon. So maybe by three, I'd get to bed and I'd be back in the club again at 8.30. So I never stopped. I was playing all the time, so I didn't have to worry about practicing. In 1942, Blakey went to New York to play with Mary Lou Williams. And then he toured with the Fletcher Henderson Orchestra for about a year. Blakey then led a big band in Boston for a short time before going to St. Louis to join Billy Eckstein's band, with whom he played from 1944 to 1947, alongside such musicians as Miles Davis, Dexter Gordon, Dizzy Gillespie, and Charlie Parker. In 1948, Blakey traveled to Africa where he learned about polyrhythmic drumming and Islamic culture, taking the Muslim name Abdullah Buhaina, but Blakey never cited Africa as the roots of his music. Since so many of the great jazz musicians are black, they try to connect us to Africa, he said in a 1984 interview. But I'm an American black man. We ain't got no connection to Africa. I imagine some of my people come from Africa, but there are some Irish people in there too. I'm a human being and it don't make no difference where I come from. And they're trying to put jazz off in the corner as being black, he added. Jazz is American. It ain't got a damn thing to do with color. I'll take kids from any part of the world. If they want to play jazz, I'll put them in my band and they'll play jazz. Over the next few years, the drummer joined forces with pianist Horace Silver to form a quintet that pioneered a new kind of energized, bebop-based small group jazz that drew inspiration from gospel music and blues. Its practitioners called it hard bop, and on a live 1954 album recorded for Blue Note called A Night at Birdland, Blakey and Silver's quintet established the blueprint for that particular new sound and style. 
and when Silver left to start his own band, Blakey kept the Jazz Messenger's name. In 1959, tenor Benny Golson joined the quintet, and soon after was joined by what became one of the best-known lineups of the Jazz Messengers, tenor Wayne Shorter, trumpeter Lee Morgan, pianist Bobby Timmons, and Jimmy Merritt. The songs written during that period became trademarks for the band, including Moan In, Along Came Betty, Blues March, and Ping Pong. In the early 1950s, Blakey was freelancing, leading pickup bands in New York clubs. This was a tricky time for jazz. Black audiences had started to migrate to R&B and business in the jazz clubs. As the historian Bob Blumenthal put it, was depressed. The reason was simple. Bebop was intended for a seated, listening audience. But the predominantly blue-collar, black audiences in the northern industrial cities like Philadelphia, Cleveland, Detroit and Chicago wanted music they could snap their fingers to, clap their hands and get up and dance to. This new, evolving R&B scene was catching the ear of young jazz musicians. They listened and enjoyed the sounds of this vigorous and creative new music, since the clubs and social spaces where the R&B bands played were also where the bebop bands found work. It's here that hardbop's roots can be found. The sense of a new era of jazz being defined came at the end of 1955, when the band performed Live at the Café Bohemia Volumes 1 and 2. The Jazz Messengers began recording for Blue Note Records and became a mainstay on the jazz club circuit through the 1960s. They also toured Europe and North Africa, and in 1960, they became the first American jazz band to play in Japan. And in the early 1970s, along with his work with the Jazz Messengers, Blakey made a world tour with the Giants of Jazz, which included Dizzy Gillespie, Sonny Stitt, and Thelonious Monk. He also participated in a legendary drum battle with Max Roach, Buddy Rich, and Elvin Jones at the 1974 Newport Jazz Festival. While Blakey had always made a point of hiring young talent, the late 1960s and 1970s were lean times for jazz and it's no secret that Blakey struggled to keep a band together during this period. But by the late 1970s, jazz education in America was coming into its own. The conveyor belt of talented young graduates from places such as Berklee College of Music, the Manhattan New School, and the New England Conservatory was just beginning to be felt. Most of these young musicians had little or no professional experience, and the very best were welcomed into Blakey's Jazz Messengers. As the leader of his ever-changing group, Blakey nurtured the talents and careers of numerous jazz musicians, including some stars and a few legends. Trumpeters Freddie Hubbard, Clifford Brown, Chuck Mangione, Kenny Dorham, Donald Byrd, Wynton Marsalis, Wayne Shorter, and Hank Mobley are among the many musicians who were schooled and launched from Blakey's group. The Washington Post called Blakey's Messengers the most valued and valuable apprenticeship in jazz. Blakey forced his musicians to dig into themselves and play to their capacity, play hard and smart, make their notes and ideas count, wrote Bill Harrington in the Washington Post. Oftentimes he would pull a musician aside and tell him it was time for him to move on. When you got to a certain point, he kicked you out. He knew you were ready. Art Blakey's emphasis on mentorship and creating a nurturing environment for young musicians paved the way for many jazz artists to thrive. His band, the Jazz Messengers, served as a launch pad for emerging talent, and his emphasis on improvisation influenced the direction of jazz music. By 1990, Blakey's long-running band was back with a major label, A&M, and released an album called One For All. Blakey kept up his performance schedule with the Messengers, literally until he was hospitalized for lung cancer. He returned from one of many tours of Japan, 
with what he thought was pneumonia. He died five days after his 71st birthday, on May 16, 1990, at St. Vincent's Hospital in New York. This is Alexander from One Track Jazz. Thanks for listening.